create a united Africa. And I invited them to Nairobi, and they came all. They were against each other, but as I invited, they came. And then I spoke, believe me, half an hour. My son was there, who is also a professor for neurosurgery. He told me that that was the most emotional talk I have ever heard from you. Because I talked to their really inside, deepest place of their brain to shake them, to wake up that they are wrong, they are doing something which is stupid. Finally, in Nairobi in 2011, what was 12, I could unite them and I told them we create the first continental African Association of Neurosurgeons. And this is existing now, the third. <laughs> and, and I, of course, in the second Congress they had in, in um, Cape Town, and they asked me, I have to go. I had to fly 25 hours to Australia, uh, to South Africa. And uh, then they made me as non-African as honorary president of the African, of the uh, continental, of the CAANs. And now they are growing together. And there are more than 50, 60 countries. They have every two years a meeting. And they are now, they have a position in World Federation, which is, I say, as strong as other continent and they have representative everywhere and we are of course working for further education and further uh, uh, I would say possibility facilities for for Africa and therefore I must say I am very very uh, involved how we can change the condition of neurosurgery, which is a very, very difficult uh, field of surgery, so that everybody has access to the best options of treatment. And when we are in India, we know that it is used many circumstances, not so easy to provide every technological achievement to everybody. It is almost impossible. By 1.4 billion, is that correct? 1.4 billion. This is impossible that every department has an intraoperative MR or navigation system. But what I have done all the time, I did it in Latin America and also in many countries of Asia, I said, look, neurosurgery, to be absolutely perfect for patient and say, doesn't need all technical advancement. It needs a brilliant and crystal brain of the surgeon to avoid nonsense in neurosurgery, but help the patient just with their hands and a few instruments. It is possible. One of the most difficult surgery, you know all, is acoustic neurinoma. It's not so easy. I need only four or five instruments, not more. And I can do the best surgery ever is possible in the world. So that I cannot say this patient has to die or whatever, so that every of you, and you have here a lot of people, that have learned how to do it, they can do it with four, five, six instruments. But of course, there are other things that uh, change a little bit the outcome in uh, other, other uh, processes, uh, so that it's dependent at a little bit. But I would say, 
90 to 90 percent we don't need all these technologies that the people are talking about and I am always very disappointed that some I must say some of colleagues America or Europe less but more America they come to other countries that they have not access to so and then they demonstrate themselves with their equipment but if you look at their presentation for me is zero nothing inside of the presentation but the equipment showing ten thousand dollar or five thousand dollar this instrument and so forth and therefore i was not impressed by these people and i was always talking about that in, in latin america particularly in 70 80s i told to all my people that Forget if somebody come and start to talk about their whatever he has at home in operating theater, the man has no content, nothing on inside of himself. He wants only to show up with the instrument. Anyway, now I am going to talk about a field that neurosurgeon almost never talk about that, but it is my hobby. I am, I am going to talk to you because some of you are not neurosurgeon, but I am sure every of you will understand what I am going to talk about. Have you ever seen someone with the paresis of the face? Hanging the face down and cannot, is not able to close the eye? while eating the food and water coming down, by talking, you cannot talk normal because you have facial palsy. Do you know what it means for a person in young age? Has to carry a facial palsy up to the end of, of his life. Do you know that these people avoid the society because when they meet someone, he looks only to the face of this patient about the face. Because with every mimic, you see these terrible changes of the face. That was something that as I was 25 years, 26, it hurt me, I said. I have to try everything what I can to help these people in any circumstances and then then I I will now summarize how I started and at which places I was able whether to say accessory nerve you know, I took I published that also in the early I think early 70s I I did it all in 60s and early 70s I published and the result was very good, but the patient need to move always to elevate the shoulder. It was not very convenient for me. Later, we have found that the nerve which is responsible for the tongue has almost similar function with the facial nerve. Then when we are talking, and so we are using facial and our tongue together. So we started to use the hypoglossus nerve and anastomose with facial. This is the technique, and uh, I don't go to details. The neurosurgeon know that, but anyway. And this is the result. This lady and the abducen it is very easy, you need to shorten the lateral muscle in, in, in the eye. This is a routine operation by ophthalmologists. So she has started to have a normal life after this surgery. But these patients at that time, as we anastomose directly end to end, they had on one side atrophy of the tongue. What they could eat and they could use as